What's going on guys and welcome back to some more Walking Dead. We're going to be doing Season 8 Episode 4 today. I appreciate you guys coming by to check this one out. We left off in the last episode with King Ezekiel's crew with along with Carol getting not necessarily ambushed but an unexpected, you know, gunfire coming from look like a tower through a window because they thought they cleared the camp but it wasn't so so i'm a little bit worried about carol um she wasn't close to them because she left she left from over there to go check on the rest of the um to 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 make sure everything was clear and to make so she wasn't in the vicinity so i'm hopeful that she's okay um so all them guys rushed to protect King Ezekiel after they thought everybody survived the entire thing. Um, so it's kind of sad. They rushed to protect him, you know, protect the king, you know. But at the same time, it's just like, wow, they thought it was going to come out unscathed, but that wasn't so. So what now? You get what I'm saying? Because he's been telling them not one man, not one man, you know. And now look at where we at. And then we have we also have the, the morality thing still going on, you know, with Morgan. I don't know what Morgan is going to do now. That fight he had with Jesus. All these little things, man, they're coming to a T. And, you know, on the other spectrum of things, I kind of understand why people probably don't like season eight. Because right at this moment. You can see that they're slowly picking up the pace and they're slowing things down from everything that happened in season seven. Why wouldn't you slow things down as a writer? You get what I'm trying to say? Like, why wouldn't you? You know, you got plenty of seasons to go. It's not like you're trying to pack everything into a final season. You have to build this thing back up again because it was built. It's like. End of season six beginning of season seven the series was here 10 it was at 10 you can't expect the whole the rest of the series to be up here now you just can't it's like you know you can't you can't write like that you can't keep people at a hype level all the time you see this in continuous series over years it happens to an anime it, it it's just how it is every season can't be as hype as when they hit that 10 level, they got to bring it back down some. You know what I'm saying? Give you guys a perfect example of an um, of an anime, Attack on Sizen. Season 1, 10 out of 10. The hype level was at 10. I'm not, not rating it. The hype level was at 10. Right? Hype level at 10. Season 2, it, you know, slow down the hype level. Build some lore. That's what they did. Build a lot of lore in season two. Some huge reveals that happened. The hype level was still up there, but there wasn't a ton of fighting and stuff like that. Fights happened. Some really hype fights happened, but not as much as what happened in season one. It was better animation in season two, too, in my opinion. Um, you know, but when you talk about Attack on Titan, it's just, it's just what it is. You know, and that goes for a lot of series too. Um, you can't have the hype level up here. You know, you can have expectancy for like a season, right? Like the final season is a whole different story. If you, if season eight was the final season of The Walking Dead and they started out like this, it still would be great. It still would be great. You know, because you know they're building up to a final moment. I would still be like up here because for me, the things that satisfy me are a little bit different than a lot of people. Like I appreciate a good story. I appreciate when a, when a writer takes his time to write a comprehensive story. I love that. So I might have a little bit of different appreciation for stuff like this than some people do. Like some people, they, they love to be, you know, on a certain high all the time. And for me, it's just like if he if a writer is taking his time to tell a story, you got to give him that time. Yeah, this book might not be, you know, the best. It might not be the best 
in your eyes. It might not be the best if he's just building lore and building up the universe some more. You get what I'm saying? Before he gets to that. I mean, right now you're seeing Rick go against is the first person that he came up against that humbled him. That, you know what I'm saying? Like true nemesis shit. Got to give him time to work this out because they don't want to, they do not want to waste the character that is Negan too. You got to understand that too. So, and anyways, let's jump to this episode. I will see you guys for the review. Alright, so that was... Season 8, Episode 4 of The Walking Dead, man. I have to say, man, I don't know how people... I still can't see it. Four episodes in. And as I said, during the intro, we are talking about, you know, there has to be a build-up. You gotta give stuff time to build up. We were at that high. Gotta bring us down and then build up the hype again. Sometimes you have to do that when it comes on to TV show. I'm enjoying these episodes, man. These four episodes were really well constructed, you know, we're taking wins after wins after wins, and now we finally taken our first loss, in my opinion. Um, this, this, you know what I'm saying, this was the first loss. And I think they chose to go, um, I think they go, they, they, you know, I think they go, I think they chose to go with um you know king ezekiel's people because we are less connected to them we don't really know anybody from there you get what i'm saying except for carol and and king ezekiel jerry and and shiva who else do we know over there you know what i'm saying like who else do we have like an emotional connection to and i think that's the reason why they chose to make them take that beating you get what i'm saying for everybody else because you know if anybody else from anywhere else i mean the same could go for the hilltop too but they don't have enough people for it to cause like a big impact for them to recreate that scene because we will be wondering where so many people from the hilltop came from anyways <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So it was the right choice, in my opinion, to continue the story, to show that devastation, to show the, the most the most optimistic person in the show just a huge loss. Losing Shiva. You know what I'm saying? Losing everybody that he's been around for all this time calling him king they died protected him sacrificed himself including shiva he has taken a huge loss and we're gonna see how this impacts his character going for going forward um you know shiva's still the mvp man still the mvp as i said man this the Walking Dead have its ups and downs, and that's, you know, how you feel. That's just your feeling. You get what I'm saying? As in, you feel like you're a part of this. You feel like you're helping, even though you're just sitting down watching, you know. You're going to have those really good moments, ups. We got a win, and we took a huge loss in this episode. You know, getting the guns, and also... King Ezekiel Lucan, you losing the majority of his people because a lot of them went and it, all of them got torn up and they went to that Gavin um, camp or whatever. Um, I don't think they knew the guns were there um, or maybe they were radioed in on it. I don't know. I never heard that came through, so I don't know. I don't think they knew that the guns were there. I think. I think Carol just went to go see where they were or they found out by the gunfire that those were M2s. It could have been to that too. So I know it's slow. I know. I know that it's slow, but I'm enjoying this pacing for some reason. Like I like this pacing of the show, you know, and I like when they build up to something. You get what I'm saying? 
I like when TV shows do that because then when you just start off everything with a bang, it just feels not authentic. You get what I'm saying? You know, um, not talking about season seven. Season seven, that was a boom of an episode to start the series, to start off season seven. So, you know, that's an exception. If you're going to do, if you left off with such a cliffhanger in season six, of course, season seven is going to start off peeking up where that left off because they couldn't have done anything else in that particular situation. So, in my opinion, they did a very good job of telling their story how they wanted to tell it. So, for me, I'm enjoying season eight. This is episode four. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the reactions, man. Hopefully you guys are for real, for real, for real, because I am. Okay. So thank you guys so much for tuning in as always, man. Leave a like on this video. Uh, um, yeah, leave a like, leave a comment. I'm drawing a blank because it's like two. I'm literally recording this at two o'clock in the morning. Something I never do. I've been thinking. Um, I have sound kind of soundproof the room that I'm in so I'm able to do reactions late at night now but I'm still not talking too loud so my voice won't you know whatever but I've finally gotten around to soundproofing the room and because you know quarantine and all so yeah good time so I can react to late in the night now but there's but I'm still not going to push it too much because you know I live with someone you know what I'm saying so I'm still not going to push it too much because I still need to you know take care of other businesses as such so leave a like leave a comment subscribe if you're new it's your boy terabyte reacts and I'm out peace